Well, greetings and welcome to the Santa Ana Mountains here in Southern California. The Santa Ana Mountains are part of the Western Peninsula Ranges. And today, I'd like to focus in on intrusive igneous rocks. In fact, intrusive igneous rocks is what comprises the majority of this range. So why don't you join me and let's explore these igneous rocks and see if we can find anything interesting. Before we start looking at some of the rocks, let's get a little context, shall we? So here's a diagram of Southern California, specifically the Peninsula Ranges, and it's broken up into blocks by these different faults. So I'm in the Santa Ana Mountains block, that's over here, specifically right above Lake Elsinore. Here's the Pacific Ocean. And then the Elsinore Fault cuts through and separates the Santa Ana Mountains block from the Paris block, that's this middle section. And then the San Jacinto Fault actually separates the Paris block from the San Jacinto's mountains block, okay? So that's kind of the layout we have here in Southern California for the Peninsula Ranges. And we can look at it in real time, okay? So I'm on the Santa Ana Mountains block. Like I said, I'm right above Lake Elsinore, which is right there. So at the base of these mountains, trending northwest, is the Elsinore Fault, which separates the Santa Ana Mountains block, again, that's where I'm at, from the Paris block. So that flat area to those uh, brown mountains, that's all the Paris block. In fact, Lake Elsinore is a sag pond. Remember, that fault is right here, okay? And then if you look way out in the distance over here, that's San Jacinto. There is a fault, the San Jacinto Fault, at the base of that mountain, running again northwest, and it separates the Paris block from the San Jacinto Mountains block way over there. So you got three blocks way over there, San Jacinto Mountains block, the Paris block, and the Santa Ana Mountains. These, don't be confused with these mountains way in the distance. Those are the San Gabriel Mountains and the San Bernardino Mountains of the transverse ranges. So those are the anomalies out here in Southern California that trend west and east. But we are part of the Peninsula Ranges. Santa Ana Mountains, Paris Block, San Jacinto, all trending northwest, southeast. Now let's add a little color to the diagram, shall we? This diagram is representing the diversity of compositions within the Peninsula Range Bathyllus. These are these intrusive igneous rocks we're going to explore. Now geologists noticed something very interesting. They noticed that in the western Peninsula Ranges, which would be over here where I'm at in the Santa Ana Mountains Block, the composition of these intrusive igneous rocks are more mafic. And then as they did their studies and kept going through here, they noticed that the, the mafic rocks kind of dissipated and it was more felsic all the way to the San Jacinto block where mainly all felsic. So there's this trend of mafic to felsic as you go through the Peninsula Range batholith. So it naturally begs the question, why in the west of the Peninsula Range Bathlith is the composition of the igneous rock more mafic, and as you move to the east, it becomes more felsic? Well, we need to remember where these magma plumes came from. They came from a subducting zone, right? You had the oceanic Farallon plate that began to subduct underneath the continental North American plate. And as that subducting zone initially started, those first melts, you're melting oceanic plate, which is mafic in composition. It's high in magnesium and iron. So those initial plumes that are coming up are going to be very mafic. And initially they're coming in contact with the leading edge of the North American plate, which is more oceanic. So they're gonna retain more of that mafic composition. But as you move the subducting zone to the east and the magma plumes are starting to um, get created and move up and come in contact with continental crust, which is more felsic in composition, that felsic composition in that continental crust melts into and taints that magma, so to speak, and makes it more felsic. So that's why geologists think that from west to east, it goes mafic to felsic. Now, there are exceptions out here. But in the Santa Ana block where I'm at, we are on that leading edge of that subducting zone. So we are more mafic here. So let's check out some of the intrusive igneous rocks around here 
and see if that lines up. Okay, here's our first example of an intrusive igneous rock that is mafic in composition. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gabbro. be saying, well, what's Gabbro? <laughs> Great question. Well, you might be more familiar uh, with the extrusive cousin of Gabbro, and that's basalt. So when you see those eruptions that are happening out in uh, Hawaii or Iceland, and that red lava is flying out and it's creating that black rock, that's basalt. This is exactly the same composition, more or less, but the difference is the cooling process, right? So when it comes out of a volcano, it cools really quickly. So the crystals aren't able to form. So you, you get this uh, very fine grained uh, black rock, that's the basalt. But if you take that same composition uh, lava, or in this case, it would be magma because it's way underground, miles beneath the surface, and you cool it very slowly and you allow the minerals to uh, move around and create crystals that are visible to the naked eye, that becomes gabbro. So again, this represents a mafic intrusive igneous rock. And that's why it cooled slowly to create this gabbro. Here's a cool section of the gabbro. Sorry for the graffiti, that's so disappointing. But here you can you can see that it's got character. It's got magmatic movement. You know, you got swirling going on in this uh, magma chamber as, as it's cooling. And check out over here, this is really beautiful. Check out how large the crystals are in this section. Let's don't fall off the cliff tar. Look at this, huh? Beautiful section of gabbro. So the white mineral most likely is plagioclase feldspar. And the big black crystals that you see there is a, a pyroxene mineral, that's my guess. And based on the cleavage planes and how they're boxy like that, I'm gonna guess that that's augite. But regardless, what a beautiful example. Intrusive igneous rock. This cooled very slowly for these minerals to become this big, these crystal sizes to become that big. All right, we're gonna make our way across the street to this other magma emplacement. This is not gabbro, this is actually a tonalite, just to show you the diversity of compositions of magma chambers out here. But it's what's within this tonalite that I think you'll find most interesting. Let's go check it out. So here we have an emplacement of tonalite. Just again, to show you the diversity of, you have an emplacement of mafic gabbro here, and here more felsic tonalite. But do you see anything that looks out of place in this outcrop? Look at that thing. Come get a closer look. Here's a little closer look. Okay, so you got the quartz diorite or the tonalite here, but right here we have a xenolith of gabbro. Again, sorry for the graffiti, but how cool is that? A xenolith of gabbro within the tonalite. So what does this mean? So the implications here are super exciting because how do you get a piece of the gabbro within this emplacement of tonalite? Well, let's try to play the story back. So if a piece of the gabbro is within the tonalite, that tells us that the Gabbro emplacement, that mafic emplacement, must have been here first before this tonalite emplacement. So just think about it. You have the mafic emplacement that works its way up through the crust. It's this massive magma chamber and it slowly cools into this beautiful gabbro that we saw. And then who knows how much longer uh, this another pulse of magma 
comes up, but it's not mafic. It's more felsic, but it's right up against this mafic emplacement of this gabbro. And it's interacting with it because it pulled pieces of it off of the emplacement and pieces of it ended up within the tonalite. How cool is that? So you have a gabbro xenolith within a tonalite emplacement. It gets easier. got more uh, examples of these gabbro xenoliths up, up the mountain a little bit. I'm going to take you up here to show you some other examples of this really cool phenomenon. So here are some more darker gabbro xenoliths eroding out of the tonalite. There's definitely differential erosion. You can see how they're just like getting exhumed out of the tonalite as it starts to break down. I mean, just take a look at this handsome xenolith of Gabbro. I mean, have you seen anything more handsome than this? My word, look at this. So you got differential erosion, right? So the, it's actually more resistant to erosion because it's, it's being exhumed from the surrounding uh, quartz diorite or the uh, tonalite. It's pretty bizarre and amazing. And this tells me something else too, that when this piece fell into that original felsic magma, it didn't melt it, right? It didn't melt and mix it into the magma, right? You wouldn't get a rock coming out of it like this. You wouldn't get a xenolith like this. So this fell into that magma chamber and uh, held, on, held its own. It, it, it resisted being melted. It just uh, accepted the fact that it was gonna be part of this new emplacement until uplift and weathering erosion took over and now it's getting exhumed and they're all sprinkled all over this outcrop. Just a, a, an amazing example of two interacting uh, emplacements of different composition of magma. It's just, it's just incredible. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining me as uh, we kind of toured around the Western Peninsula Ranges, showing an example of a mafic uh, emplacement out here. We understand that the, the Western side is more mafic than the Eastern. There are exceptions. There's a, just a mix mash of different compositions of magma, which makes it so interesting and exciting, especially when those two emplacements start interacting. As dramatic as this, we have just a really cool example of a gabbro xenolith within Quartz diorite, or I think they call it now tonalite. It's just a, a wonderful example. Really appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, yeah.